Hello student of the physical sciences. Welcome to your third video and I hope this one's a short one because we've got a little bit less to cover in this one. Last two videos have been a bit long because there's a lot of content to get through. This one's going to be short and sweet hopefully. Let's just quickly recap what we know or what we learnt from the previous videos. Um, and the main thing I wanted you to come away from that is an understanding of what the atom is and where it all fits together. So let's just recap. So we have atoms. Matter is made up of atoms and there's all different types of atoms depending on the elements that they are and we'll come to that a little bit more as well in the future. And so the basic structure of an atom is you have electrons whizzing around. These electrons are negatively charged, don't have much mass and whiz around what's called the nucleus. And inside the nucleus where most of, or nearly all the mass of the atom is we have two types of particles, protons and neutrons. And the protons have a positive charge, and the neutrons have no charge, and the protons and neutrons weigh exactly the same amount. And they're in the nucleus. Okay? Um, and we also said that sometimes electrons can be lost or gained, and so atoms can have a charge imbalance and be positive or negative. But for most of the things that we're going to be talking about in the start of physical science, we're going to be talking about neutral atoms. So the number of electrons equals the number of protons. So the charges cancel each other out. All right, let's get on to atomic number and mass number. Let's see if we can get through this. Now, the atomic number is a term that you need to understand or remember, sometimes given the symbol Z, and it is the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom, and it defines an element. So an element is defined by the number of protons in its nucleus. So if you look at the periodic table, if you look at this guy, which I've given you, there is how many? A hundred and, hundred and something elements and each element is defined by the number of protons in its nucleus. So if we look at hydrogen, hydrogen is element number one, it has one proton. Carbon, it's element number six, so that six is the atomic number and that tells us it has six protons in its nucleus. No other element has six protons in its nucleus. Every carbon atom in the universe has six protons in its nucleus because that's the definition of an element. So every oxygen atom in the universe has eight protons in its nucleus. Alright, and that's the atomic number. And we get that from the periodic table. The next thing is the mass number, sometimes given a symbol A, and the mass number is remember what we said most of the mass is in the nucleus of an atom and then therefore the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons added together okay and that gives us the atomic number now where do you get the number of protons from well that's the atomic number okay you won't be able to see this tiny little thing but it's on your periodic table which I'll give you now the the mass number what we do in physical science is we cheat a little bit when we're starting out and we use mass numbers which are the numbers at the bottom of each element and we round them to whole numbers, their nearest whole number because you can't have half or a third of a proton or a neutron. Now just quick quick deviation uh, if you look at your periodic table you'll see that something like carbon it has a, this is called the relative atomic mass and that's the mass of all atoms that are out there and it's the average and it says it's 12.01. So in this section that we're in now, we would round that to 12. And that would be the number of protons plus neutrons. So carbon has a mass number of 12. If you go next door, boron says its relative atomic mass, which we haven't learned about yet, is 10.81. So in this section, we round that to 11. So it has a mass number of 11. So the total of its protons and neutrons is 11 for boron, and so forth. You'll get the idea when you do a couple of questions. And this is a representation. This is where we put the various numbers. The mass number goes up here, and the atomic number goes here. 
and the symbol of the element goes there. Let's have a quick look at an example. Now, this is referred to as the isotropic symbol. Now, we'll use this a lot in radioactivity and in nuclear physics when we do that, and we use it in this section here, but we don't use the whole lots of numbers much in chemistry. Chemists don't worry too much about this. They're worried about this. Okay. And let's see. We can determine the number of neutrons in an atom by subtracting the atomic number, which is the number of protons, from the mass number, which is the number of protons plus neutrons. And we'll do an example of that. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So this is the symbol for sodium. If you go to your periodic table, you will see that sodium is over here on the left hand side and it's element number 11. So this is where this came from. So this number here is the number of protons. Okay. Now this number here, if you look on your periodic table, it says 22.99. We round it up because you can't have 0.999 of a proton or a neutron. This is the number of protons plus neutrons, P plus N. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so if we want the number of neutrons, what would we do? Well, we would go 23 minus 11. We just subtract the number of protons from the total protons plus neutrons. And what do we get? We get 12 neutrons. Let's put an S there. Pretty good, eh? And that's what this little last sentence here says. An atom of sodium therefore has 11 protons, 12 neutrons. How's that? So, let's get rid of that writing. And you'll have a go at these questions. Now these questions are in the video simply to remind me and remind you that you're going to have to do them. Don't do them for homework. We do these in class. We don't do homework anymore. Um, so don't do these at home. You'll have time in class. And if you have any problems, you'll be able to ask me. And we'll get it sorted out. Okay? So, guess what? Some answers appear. That's the end of the video. Cheerio!